Hey guys, good afternoon, man. Welcome to Big Love Radio. Man, it has been a day. <laughs> it's been an hour. <laughs> hey, I'm Joel, a.k.a. Big Love. It's my beautiful wife, Miss Tammy. A.k.a. Mrs. Big Love. <laughs> Mrs. Big Love, amen. So, you know, guys, man, y'all have ever had one of those days where just you're plugging along and everything just seems to go wrong, man. Just today's one of those days. One man. of those but, hours that nothing goes right. But thank you, Jesus. He is the victor and we are in victory in him. Amen. Yes. But um, yeah, so we've got camera issues. We had computer issues. We had podcast equipment issues. But man, at the end of the day, here we are, man. So thank you, Jesus, for that, man. God bless you guys. And uh Man, we just uh, we got some shout outs, man. We want to uh, shout out to, man, it's it's really awesome how, you know, when I first got the vision to do Pando, um, I remember the Lord saying, you're going to be speaking to thousands of people, man, across the country. And I was thinking, man, baby, that's going to be a lot of driving. Right. You know, who, who knew that Pando would come out many, many, many years later? Yep. And, uh, but, man, so our, our pastor's wife called the other day. And uh, she said, you're not going to believe I got a praise report. Yes. And you want to tell the story because she talked to you. Oh, yeah. So um, so we want to give a shout out to Sergio at the Bradshaw unit. What's up, Sergio? Sergio, we heard from your mama that you've been watching our podcast. Amen. And, we, and it's funny because we heard that you said, oh, there's a white guy on there. <laughs> <laughs> And if you saw Joel in person, you would say, oh, yeah, he's not white. <laughs> Sergio, you bet me several times, brother, at the men's home in, in uh, Fort Worth, amen, with Sister Wanda and Pastor Mike, amen. But So shout, amen. Out, shout out to the men at the Bradshaw unit. Amen. We heard that y'all are watching, and we are thrilled, guys. Thank you, Jesus, man. We pray that the Lord is speaking to you through our podcast. and. Uh, yep. Of course, we got our Friday night ladies at the Lane Murray oh, unit. Oh, yeah, Friday night ladies. Yeah, yeah. in fact, Friday night ladies, uh, we are starting a new... Quit beating um, the table. Sorry, we're starting a new... <laughs> I talk with my hands a lot, so sometimes I don't know what to do with my hands, but we are starting a new Bible study this Friday night. <laughs> we're starting it this Friday night, so uh, we miss a lot of you ladies last friday so come on out don't let satan keep you on your bunk in your in your pod in your little pods come on out ladies because we're starting a new bible study this friday yeah and i'll tell you guys it's uh you know um i went through this kind of myself with with uh, daddy issues and we've all had some and we're going to be starting a new series man uh the father effect talking yeah. about fatherless lives whether it be a you know a father that wasn't in your life or a father that was there that just wasn't a father or a bad father or a bad stepfather but i think we've all have issues in that man so i believe it's going to be a good good uh, uh series that we're going to be talking about so you guys uh, yeah. come on out friday night man be a part of the class man i, I think you'll be blessed by it yeah. and it's not really going to be a a teaching so to speak it's going to be more videos. We're going to watch some videos. And it's about uh, John Finch, that uh, father uh, blew his brains out, man, when he was a little boy. Yeah. And he talks about how it affected his life and how he has uh, gotten through it through his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, man, y'all come on out. Like I said, it's going to be videos and more interacting, discussing, kind of talking about things that's happened in each of our lives. Man, I, yeah. I think you guys will be blessed. Amen. So, but tonight we've got, uh, oh my gosh, we got a joke. Yes. And, and I've, been, I've been voted out of the jokes, I see, <laughs> man. Y'all tell me how Tammy's jokes are better, but. Those are their words. Those are not my words. I didn't tell them to say that. Yeah, but they're my jokes. You <laughs> just tell them better, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so anyway, we got a joke for you guys. Oh, so at Sunday school, uh, they were teaching how God created everything including, you know, humans. And little Johnny seemed really intent when they told him how Eve was created out of one of Adam's ribs. And so later in the week, you know, his mother noticed him lying down like he was sick. And she said, Johnny, what's the matter? And he said, I've got a pain in my side. I think I'm going to have a wife. Amen. <laughs> bada bada bing. <laughs> All right, that was kind of funny. 
Oh. What did y'all think? Was that funny? Did y'all I laugh thought, a little bit? I thought it was. I thought it was funny. All right. Well, good. And good. That's all that really matters. <laughs> all right, guys. We got a few shout outs. Um, we got several letters. Let's see what we got this week, man. Uh, we have got Michael at the uh, High Tower Unit Mine. Mike, thank you for writing. Uh, man, I wrote you back uh, yesterday, so you should have gotten a letter from me already. Amen. On Securus. On Securus. Yes. Amen. And hey, uh, Joe's another one, man, at the All Red Unit. Hey, Joe, we wrote you. Um, I actually wrote you back yesterday. I went through a lot of these and wrote you guys back yesterday, so hopefully y'all got the email. Speaking right. of the All Red Unit, we will yes. be there in December. Amen. We're coming so in December. We're coming in December to the All Red Unit. So, um, and uh, matter of fact, uh, we have a lady that goes to our church. Um, uh, Veronica. Veronica. And uh, she gave me an email today for one of the, I don't know if it's a chaplain or somebody out there in All Red that I wrote today. So hopefully uh, God will open the door for us to get some, uh, some dates out there with you guys, man. Yes. We're looking forward to it. And then we got uh, Dave, man. I wrote Dave at in Woodville, Texas. Um, man, I forgot what unit this is. It doesn't say. Um, but Dave, we I wrote you back. Oh, so. right, it's right there. Look. Right. Whatever that is. The Lewis, uh, Gib Lewis HS. And it shows from Shreveport, Louisiana. Amen. Oh, maybe it's on the border. So maybe you're, you're down there in Louisiana. <laughs> And then Brother Ray, man, um, I think I talked to you, Ray, over at the Estes unit last week, and I got your letter. I wrote you back yesterday. So all you guys should have gotten a letter from us on Securist uh, yeah. yesterday, as a matter of fact. And, man, this one is for Tim, man, all the way in Bowling Green, Florida, oh. brother. Let me tell you something. I got your letter, and I can't help you with what you wrote about but I've got a brother in Christ, man, uh, Pastor Jimmy, here in Venus, Texas, man, that I'm going to pass this information on, and, I, and I'm almost positive he'll be able to help you if you could make your way to, uh, to the Fort Worth, Dallas uh, area when you get out, man. Amen? We, don't, we, don't, we can't help you, but we know a guy. <laughs> we know a guy that knows a guy. Amen? Y'all know them guys. Y'all are probably one of them guys. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Oh, hey, so um, now we're going to talk about something today that I think a lot of us No, I know we all have it. And if you don't think you got it, you really got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because if you don't think you got this issue, then you're the main people we're talking to. <laughs> Amen. God bless y'all. But we're going to talk about strongholds, man. Um, it's been kind of heavy on my heart because, uh, you know, strongholds, they do exactly that. They take hold of you strongly. Amen. Yeah. And I know I've gone through it. My wife's gone through it. And I'm sure you guys have gone through it. But we're going to talk a little bit about some of the strongholds in our life, both, you know, regular strongholds and then and then religious strongholds. There's a lot of religious strongholds oh. that happens in our life. Amen. Yes. And um, but we're going to start off with what is a stronghold. Amen. And the Bible says, well, not this isn't from the Bible. This is kind of what we put together. A stronghold is anything that has a stronghold in your mind that manifests itself in habitually sinful behavior. Hello. Ooh. Yeah. So, yeah. but you know, a lot of people have never even heard that word. Amen. Like a lot of people have never even heard the word stronghold. But the good thing is. We're talking about a negative stronghold, but there's also good strongholds, and we're going to talk about that a little later, man. So we're talking about strongholds, man, things that uh, get into your mind, they manifest in your mind and make you believe things that aren't true. Yeah. And But how do we develop a stronghold? Ask me how we develop a stronghold. Ask me. <laughs> ask, me how, <laughs> ask me how we develop that. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you asked. Amen. Hey, man, get your Bibles. And I hope you guys, man, when y'all watch our show, have your Bibles handy because we always go to Scripture. But we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. And we're going to talk about how do strongholds develop and how do we overcome strongholds. So the Word of God reads, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Not guns, not pistols, not knives. On the contrary, they have divine power. Here's that word power again. If you notice, every week we talk about the process of Christ and the power of Christ. 
It says they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretentious that sets itself against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought that makes it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Yeah. Wow, that's a whole lot of obedience, disobedience in there. Yep. So he says that we don't fight with weapons of the world. And that, that, that's a problem, you know, because a lot of us grew up, I know for me, I love to fight. Yeah. And I'd be tree stump, man, if I thought I could win. Amen? How many of y'all punched a wall before? Hello. Uh -huh. You know, so. <laughs> I never did that, but a lot of people did. But it says that we don't fight with the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Keep watching, because we're going to talk about your stronghold here in just a minute. Amen. Let's talk about examples of spiritual strongholds. I promise one of these, or two of these, or three of these, or D, relate to us, above. or all the above. <laughs> Heaviness. Oh. Depression. Grief. Sadness. What you got? Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Poverty. Hello. Mm. Debt. Greed. Here's one I used to have all the time. Hate of rich people. <laughs> Hello. Yep. Laziness. Come on, somebody. Lack of generosity. Coveting. Idolatry of possessions. Mm. Come on, man. We've all done that. We've all just idolized our possessions. Amen. Now, we've also got jealousy, anger, envy, bitterness. Have we hit your, have we hit your button yet? <laughs> Come on, man. Lack of self-control. <laughs> yeah, I like to eat. Y'all be quiet, man. That's why they call me Big Love. Hello. Selfishness. Relentless. Here's the one. Fighting in competition. Oh. All of these are the opposite of God's Word. If you notice that, every single one of these that we just mentioned goes against the Word of God. Yeah. And that's what a strong, a, 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 a demonic stronghold is. It's anything that goes against what the Word of God says. Right. You know, and I'm going to use two two sayings, guys, that we've all said. What are they? What's two of them we talked about? This is the way I've always been. And this is just how I am. And this is just how I am. Yeah. Uh, wrong answer. Yeah. God loves us so much, man, that he doesn't want us to say the way we've always been. And, you know, one of the, one of the strongholds that... Um, I know for me, mm -hmm. was self low self-esteem. Yeah. You know, the Bible says I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, but I had low self-esteem. Yeah. Low self-esteem brings on jealousy. You know, you're jealous because of your low self-esteem. But all of these guys, man, you got to think about this. Which one of these strongholds applies to you? Amen? Because I could go, man, I used to be sad. I used to be in debt. I used to hate rich people. I was lazy. I didn't like to give. I was selfish, lack of generosity, idolatry of possessions. Hello, somebody. You see all my cowboy stuff? Amen. <laughs> and here, I'm going to show you a quick, a quick <laughs> shout out to uh, Stronghold, bro. How about them cowboys? Amen. <laughs> see, some of y'all are like, yeah, how about them cowboys? But some of y'all are oh, boo them cowboys. Well, here's, I'm going to show you a Stronghold right now. You see this? Uh, Cleveland Brown helmet, that's a stronghold, baby, because we whipped y'all's butts last night, amen? <laughs> Joel had so much confidence that he took a nap during I the game. took a nap we were doing so good, amen? <laughs> and, then we got, and then we got, for a few Cowboy fans, you know y'all Steeler haters, so mm -hmm. here's another stronghold in your life, brother. It's time to come on to the Cowboy side, amen? No, man, I'm just teasing. That's, uh, you know, those are the two teams that we have strongholds against. You know, you know one of these one of these words that that I that I picked up right away Which that one? applies to me and you is the competition. Because I know for me and I know for you, like even if it was like a simple like board game or card game, I wouldn't play unless I knew I could win. Man, she I already know what you're talking about checkers, guys. We went to Austin one time and we went and had coffee. And I saw <laughs> I saw a checkerboard over there and I'm like, man, come on, babe, let's play some checkers. I'm gonna get you. 
I just knew I was going to beat her. Man, she beat me two games in a row. Hello. <laughs> I really wasn't trying, but for you, I'm thinking about all the sports that you played growing Amen. up. Amen. You know, you didn't play sports to lose. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. So now, so we've, we've gone over some of the strongholds in our life, but what are the characteristics of a stronghold? You want to read that? Well, the defining mark of a stronghold is a recurring pattern. A reoccurring pattern. Reoccurring. How many guys and ladies have you said, man, when I get out of prison this time, I ain't ever coming back. Yep. When I get out, I ain't messing with that dope no more. When I get out, I ain't messing with that crazy woman or crazy dude no more. Man, I'm not drinking anymore because I know every time I do where it leads me to. Or man, I'm not going back to the gambling houses. Or I'm not watching that pornography anymore. But it reoccurs, and, and it how, reoccurs. And how many people do we meet in prison that, you know, you've been in there five, six, seven, eight times, and I, and, and in my mind, you know, now of course, now you can look at Joel and I, and, and you can tell that we like food. But in my mind, I'm thinking that food in prison ain't getting any better. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's still horrible, and I've I've eaten. I've only had to eat one of those meals, which was not that bad, but. I've seen what they put on y'all's trays, and I'm like, yeah, but that... she, ain't act for, she ain't ever asked for a second time to go to child hall, amen. <laughs> I'm like a one and done, you know. Amen. <laughs> so it says it's a reoccurring pattern. It literally has a strong hold on you so that you find it extremely difficult to break free from it. Man, what's hard for you right now, guys? But look what it says. It says, so you keep coming back to well, it. Well, hang on, though. Uh-oh. I'm just asking you a question. What do you keep going back to? What do you keep going back to that you know ain't good for you? It may be something in the, in the prison, man. You know, mine was not watching all the crud on TV, not playing spades anymore, not playing dominoes anymore. You know, there's nothing wrong with playing a game. But when it consumes you, and when you know that, you know what? Every time I get locked up, I go back to making dice. I go back to playing spades. I go back to watching the novellas on the TV, trying to convince myself, oh, I just I just like the stories. Knowing you're looking at them girls. <laughs> Come on, somebody. So it says the reoccurring patterns, it literally has a stronghold on you so that you find it extremely difficult to break free from, so you keep coming back to it. That's the first indication that it's a stronghold. Drugs, alcohol, sex, addiction, gambling, pornography, whatever it is. Whatever it is that you know that goes against what the Word of God says is a stronghold in your life. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to show you through Scripture what a stronghold says. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 12, 29, it says, Or again... How can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Oh. How many strong men are in the penitentiary, man? Yep, a lot. How many, how many dads are in the penitentiary? The enemy knows, men, that if, they, if he can get you out first, he's got your family to be vulnerable. Because mama now got to go to work, leave the kids at home. The home is now vulnerable. But he says that you got to tie up the strong man first. I don't know about you, man. You try to break in my house. <laughs> You're in trouble. Right. Amen. But if some two or three men come in there, and that's what happens, man. Satan and his little minions, they run around. And they're the ones that attack you and tie you up and get you into this state of mind, guys. Think about it. Think about what you keep doing over and over again, but you say you're not doing no more. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Yeah. Or if you always do what you always did, you're always going to get what you always got. Hello. So, but we're going to talk a little more about how to break a stronghold. Ooh. Amen? Yep. So how do, what does it say here about how to break a stronghold? So it says, once you recognize the stronghold, the next step is bringing it into repentance. Okay, so repentance. What does repentance mean? It means to turn away from. Guys, we have to get our stronghold exposed to the light. Yep. Man, if you're 
still masturbating, you got to repent. You got to expose it to the light. Yep. If you're still having a potty mouth, you got to expose it. Lord, forgive me. We got to take this to the Father. And we got to, He already knows. Oh, yeah. You know, He already knows what we're doing. But we got to go to Him and, man, and, and, and say, Lord, man, I'm humbly coming to you, man. I struggle in this area. Because the Bible says that for when we are weak, He is strong. So we got to repent, man. You got to go to him and give it to him. Whatever you're going through right now, man, and you think you could beat it on your own and it's your fourth, fifth, sixth time in the penitentiary, guess what? You can't. Amen? Amen. And I'm not saying that in an ugly way at all, guys. Man, I've been locked, I've been arrested 27 times. I speak from experience, man. I'm never going to quit smoking weed. I'm always going to party. I ain't never going to quit drinking my bug dummers because they ain't wiser. I never got wiser drinking them, amen? I'm always going to be a deadbeat dad. I'm always going to be a deadbeat dad. I'm always going to be in debt. All these strongholds that Joel had in his life, man, and I, and I harbored them and because I thought they were true. I, man, you couldn't get me to go smoke no weed no more yep. or to drink alcohol anymore. But it's by the grace of God that I had to go to him and say, Lord, I can't do this on my own. And I've tried, I've tried, and I've tried. Maybe you're there right now. Maybe you've tried so many times. But how many people do we know that they have, they have an issue with repentance? Because in order to repent, that means that you have to admit that something's wrong in your life. That means that you have to look in the mirror and say, I've got a problem. And how many people do you do you ever hear say, oh, well, I know I'm an alcoholic. No, they don't admit. No one ever admits that, that there's something wrong in their life because they've accepted that that's, that that's who they are. And that's a good point, babe, because you think about, I'm going to use me, for example, because that's all I got. When I <laughs> was on probation, hello, long time ago, <laughs> And the uh, judge said, look, you got five years probation yeah. and you got to go to meetings. As soon as I went to meetings, they would tell me, you got to admit that you're an alcoholic. You got to admit that you're an addict. So what the world is wanting us to do is admit that we have this stronghold. Right. So for Joel, and I'm not putting down A-A-N-A, -A -A, man, if that's, if that's what gets you clean and sober, thank you, Jesus. But for Joel, I knew it was the blood of Christ. The Bible says that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus, that the old is gone, and I am now a new person. So, guys, here's what happens a lot of times, man. We use we're a drug addict. We use we're a criminal. We use we're an alcoholic. Guys, what you got to understand, man, that is not who you are. That's what you do. Or did. Or did. <laughs> you see, there's a big difference. The enemy wants you to think, that's where identity crisis comes into play. The enemy wants you to think your identity is an alcoholic. Right. When in fact, that is not the case at all. That's a stronghold that's holding into your mind, telling you, man, that's who I am. How many times, oh, man, this is just me. I ain't never going to change. Yep. That was me. I yep. said it and said it and said it, man. But once I started, and we talked at the beginning about good strongholds. A good stronghold is, the Bible says, I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. The Bible says that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. So you see, a stronghold, like we talked about before, is anything that goes against what the Word of God says. Right. So once we start realizing that, hey, guys, man, it stings. It hurts to look at yourself in the mirror and say, man, I'm a drug addict. Man, or, or it hurts to say, I'm the problem, not everybody mm, else. Come on, because a lot of times you try to blame other people and say, oh, well, I had a bad childhood, so that's why I'm an alcoholic. Or, oh, well, my parents never let me drink growing up, so I'm making up for it because now I'm drinking now. Or, you know, I didn't really have a good childhood, so that's why I'm a drug addict. No, that's not who you are. That's what you did. Yep. Amen. That's not your identity. Your identity is in Christ. Who are you in Christ? You're a child of the most high of the most high God. That's but, who you are. But you know, if you don't know it, that's just being ignorant. And ignorant isn't dumb. 
man, when people used to call me ignorant, I'd want to fight, you mm -hmm. know, but ignorant is just not knowing any difference. And guys, that's a lot of us, man. We just weren't taught this stuff growing up. We didn't know any better. You know, I'll give you a good example growing up in the Catholic Church. I believed with everything in my being that the only way to be forgiven of your sins is to go to confession to a priest. Because that's what you were taught. That's what I was taught, and nothing in the world would have changed my mind, just like it does it for most Catholics in the world. And I'm not talking about any religion, but that was a stronghold, a, a, a Christian stronghold in my life when the Bible says that Jesus came, the, the curtain, the veil has come down. Now you could go boldly to the throne and ask for forgiveness to the Father anywhere. So it took a long time for me to get over that stronghold. You know, it took a long time to get over thinking, man, man, I'm not going to drink no more. I'm not going to smoke no more, man. It's going to be a boring life. Yeah. Man, let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> I was scrolling through my phone the other day at all the things that me and my wife have done in the last five years, man. The places we've gone, yeah. people we've met, ministries we've gotten involved with. And now God, man, look at God, man. Went from a deadbeat dad, criminal drug addict to now a pastor has a awesome ministry, an awesome wife, going into the prisons all over the country on Pando. Not a deadbeat dad. <laughs> Not a deadbeat dad. Hello, somebody. So getting back to breaking the strongholds, he says, be honest before God. Have you been honest? Yep. Have you looked at God and looked in the mirror and said, Lord, I had to say this is Joel's fault. My dad never got locked up. My mama never got locked up. My sisters never got locked up. It was always Joel getting locked up. So maybe that's you right now. Maybe that's you, and you keep playing that blame game. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, man, we're not, we're not getting down on you, man. We just want you to realize that you could be set free from the strongholds in your life, amen? Yes. Because he says right here, be honest before God and humbly let the Spirit expose the strongholds in the darkness. See, guys, that's what the enemy wants to do, man. He wants to keep this stuff hidden. Nobody's going to understand. Yeah, don't tell nobody. Because once it's exposed, now God can start working it out. Yeah. But as long as you hold on to it in darkness, man, that's where the enemy wants you. Isolation is the number one thing, man. If you're staying in your cell and you're staying all to yourself, man, that's where the enemy wants you. Get out of your cell, man. Get out of your pod. Go into the Bible studies. Go to church services. Do something different so you don't always do what you always did so you always get what you always got. Amen? Amen. Y'all still with us? <laughs> Somebody say, go Cowboys. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> so it says, how do we break free from spiritual strongholds? The only solution is to tear down these fortresses. And guys, that's what a stronghold is, man. Back in the military, it's a it's a wall to where the castle or the fortress was protected by this wall to keep the enemy out of it. That's what it, that's what it was designed for, amen. But he says right here, the only solution is to tear down the fortress by taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, what does that mean? The obedience of Christ. What does obedient mean? Um, obedience basically, it's basically um, doing what the what the Lord has called you to do. It's doing right. I mean, it's doing you know, it's doing right. You know, it's like it's like it's like when kids you know are obedient to their parents. It's because their parents have told them to do something, and they say you know, yes, ma'am, you know, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. That that's being obedient. Obedience is the opposite of disobedient. Hello. It's that simple. See, he's so... See, <laughs> I, I try to come up with these, you know, fancy terms and everything, and he's over here going, it's just the, it's just the opposite of disobedient. What's the difference <laughs> of good is evil. Wrong and right. <laughs> That's all it is. We've just, we've just been deceived, guys, for so long that the way we're doing things is okay. Yeah. You know? And, and it's not. But you know what? Our Father loves us so much that he's like, man, I'm right here. All you that have children, man, y'all can relate to that. <coughs> if Tammy don't choke to death over here, y'all. Uh-oh. 
<coughs> pause. Pause break. Anyway. <coughs> I think that went down the wrong way. So, Woo. your children come to you and say, Dad, I messed up. Man, I did this. I know for me, I would get upset. Yes, we're going to get upset. And that's okay. That's our father nature or our mother nature. But I promise you, I'm going to figure out a way to make it right. But half the time, when the kids came to you, you already knew what they did wrong. Right. Just like our father. He already knows. But he wants us to come to him, man. He wants us to come to him and say, Lord Jesus, man, I'm struggling in this area, man. I can't yeah. do it. I can't fix it. And that's when he says, come to Papa. That's right. Come to Papa. Come to, Come to Big Love, Big <laughs> Daddy, in the house. And that's when he starts to work on you, man. That's when he starts to shape and mold you. But we got to first come clean with it, man. You got to come clean with what you're doing, man, and quit making excuses. Amen? So he says, we got to tear down these fortresses. This means to replace your harmful and untrue thoughts with better promises of God. Okay, well, how do we do that? What does Romans 12, 2 say? Romans 12, 2 says, do not. It doesn't say maybe. He says, do not be conformed to the ways of the world. Well, guys, that's all we know is the world. We got brought up in the world. We got brought up in the streets. We got brought up with single families. We got brought up with family smoking pot, with pot, you know, my family outside barbecue and drinking beer. I mean, we had barbecues seven days a week, and everybody was drunk. <laughs> It wasn't about the barbecue. That was just an excuse to drink and just yep. throw some food on the grill. Amen? Yep. yep. But we got to replace these harmful thoughts. And a lot of times, guys, we just don't know how to do that, man. And the best way to do it, Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to the ways of the world, but be transformed to transform by the renewing of your mind. Well, how do we make something new? Simple. Put something new in it. <laughs> Hello. Not them same old books you're reading, them same old shows you're watching in prison. Same old music you're listening same to. Same old music you're listening to because the lyrics are demonic. Half the stuff on TV are either half-naked women, sex sells, or they're degrading the men in the sitcoms. Oh. You look at every sitcom, guys, and they're always degrading the father. They're always degrading the man. That's demonic, man. So we got to renew our mind. Well, how do we renew our mind, man? We've got to put some good stuff, some scripture in there. Just like I used to have to do, and I still do, man. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. For those days that, man, oh, man, I'm just, uh, this is all I'm ever going to be is a drug addict. I'm never going to amount to nothing. Yeah. You know, being told you're fat. You're never going to amount to nothing. You're a deadbeat dad. You're a loser. And all of a sudden, I started reading weight. The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror. Man, that's powerful. The Bible says that I'm the lender, not the borrower. Hello. Oh, yeah. That's me now. I used to beg, man, rob Peter to pay Paul. Come on, somebody. Yep. Now I get calls all the time. Hey, brother, you think you'd loan me $20? Man, man, I ain't a bank. No, I'm just kidding. But you guys are getting the point, man. So you got to learn to renew your mind, man. And that's, uh, that's in Romans 12, too. Read Romans 12, too. Now... What causes spiritual strongholds? It's a pattern, man. A spiritual stronghold is a habitual pattern of thought built into one's thought life. I'll give you a good example. You going to use my example or your own example? You want to use your example? We could use, use your example. So, you know, how we grow up and how we're taught shapes who shapes who we become um but there's a way to to break that so one of my strongholds was religion i grew up with religion i did not grow up uh, about a relationship or having a relationship with christ amen i grew up with religion so i grew up thinking that you know I, we go to church on sundays sometimes we go on wednesdays depending on what's going on and that was good enough. That was that was good enough. And a lot of people grew up the same way. A lot of people grew up with religion. They have no idea what it takes to have a relationship with Christ because no one's ever taught them. 
right. because from your from your grandparents and great grandparents growing up, this is all people have have taught over the years, and it's passed down from generation to generation. And guys, it's not a bad thing, you know. You know, past generations they just weren't taught, but that was strongholds in their life, which has got carried on to generation. So that's a that's a spiritual stronghold just to think, hey, all I got to do is go to church and and I'll go to heaven. Or or, or the other one is, oh, I'm a good person. I know I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Well, that contradicts the Bible because the Bible says there is no one good, not even one. Or I or I've got a good heart. Yeah, and the Bible says the heart's the most wicked part of the body. Yeah. So you see, a stronghold is always going to contradict what the Word of God says. Yeah. Now that's a bad stronghold. So check it out. We're going to talk about this right here. What are we going to talk about next? The all, In 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, what we just read, the only passage in Scripture that uses the expression, strongholds are arguments raised against the knowledge of God. Guys, there are so many topics in the world right now, man, that go against what God's Word says. Transgender, homosexuality, you know, those are the two big ones. You know, there's so many things that are coming into the world that's socially acceptable now that goes totally against what God's Word says. Yeah. If it's going against what God's Word says, that's rebellion. Rebellion is a form of witchcraft. So when you rebel, you're practicing witchcraft, you're rebelling, and you're believing a lie that goes against God's Word. So you cannot, and I'm telling you, I don't care if you get mad at you cannot claim you're a Christian if you're in rebellion. Because if you're rebellion, you're in witchcraft. So, guys, you got to get in this word, man, and understand, man, Lord, I just don't understand. I want to understand. Show me in Scripture, man, how I can change. Because he wants to change us. Yeah. He loves us so much that he doesn't want to leave you the same. That's why this topic, man, is touchy. It stings a little bit. But, man, I'm not on this show to ear tickle you. I'm on this show to share the love of Christ with you, and what it takes for you to be transformed to the person or man or woman of God that he's called you to be. And he did not call you to be locked up in the penitentiary. He did not call you to be a prostitute. He did not call you to be a drug addict. He did not call you to be a deadbeat dad. He called you to be more than a conqueror, the head and not the tail. That's what he called you to be, or he wouldn't say it in his word. Amen? Amen. So, how do you break... Emotional strongholds. Check it out. When a thought enters your mind, luring you into an emotional stronghold of worry, doubt, anger, hate, or shame, you got two choices, guys. Two choices. One, you can reject the thought or you can adopt the thought. That's simple. You can either receive it or you can say, okay, check it out. When Jesus came out of his 40-day fast, he, Satan called him up to the mountain. Oh. He said, oh, if you're really the son of God, man, turn that rock into bread. Yeah. What did he say? It is written. It is written. That's all we got to do, guys. We just have to, I tell you what, man, start going through your Bible and just writing some scriptures down, who you are in Christ. Look at the back of your concordance, man who you are in Christ, and just start writing some of those down and start speaking them every day. I promise you, man, at first those scriptures are going to be up here. Yep. Once they get up here, they're going to start getting here. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to start thinking differently. You're going to be like, man, why am I thinking like that? Well, man, I just cuss, but I shouldn't have cussed like that. Or I shouldn't be watching this. Or I shouldn't be doing that in the shower. Or I shouldn't be doing this. And slowly, man, God's going to start transforming and renewing your mind. That's how you get rid of the strongholds, man. you got to cast it out. You know, have you ever done this? Man, you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop eating ice cream. I'm not eating no more ice cream. Baby, I'm that. not eating no more ice cream. I've never said that. Amen. <laughs> but then the first thing you want to do is go get some ice cream. Instead of saying what you're not going to do, you got to replace that thought with a positive thought through Scripture. you got to replace the thoughts. It's that easy. It's that easy, but it's that difficult. Amen? So, you can reject the thoughts, or you can adopt it and make it your own. So far, a lot of us have adopted these strongholds in our life, and we hold on to them. 
I'll give you a good one, man. And and, and uh, my mom, Catholic lady, God bless her. When I told her I spoke in tongues and prayed in the spirit, she literally said, "Oh my God, you're speaking the devil's language." Because that's how that's how we were raised. That's how we were. A lot of us were raised like that. But check it out. I served the devil for thirty years, or more, or more. I never prayed in tongues when I was serving the devil, amen? <laughs> so, praying in tongues is a heavenly language. It's in the Bible. The Bible says that the Spirit will moan and groan for you. It'll search the inner part of you and say things that you know not what to pray for. But we grew up. It's the devil's language, yep. amen? And that's just, man, that's just one of many, guys. So... We've got... Uh, but you know what I was thinking about? What's that? Is that when you have these strongholds in your life and you're trying to make a change, and let, so let's just... I'm just going to use pornography because that's something that I struggle with for many, many years. Once you start saying, I'm no longer going to have this in my life, and then you, let's say you pick it up again, you should feel conviction Amen. about that. And let me tell you, for me, conviction, I'm just going to say it, it feels like it feels like a pair of like sweaty clothes that all I want to do is just get it off of me. Amen. And when I have that conviction that comes over me, I can't get it off of me quick enough. I'm like, I have to repent immediately. I mean, and it hits me like a ton of bricks. So if that's you and you're trying to change an area of your life, when you, when you feel conviction for the first time, it's going to feel awkward and it's going to feel like something's wrong and I want and I want this away from me. Amen. <laughs> and it ain't no fun. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about how to employ your weapons. Okay? In Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, the word of God reads, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. Now, why would we use this verse? It says, because we believe that godly strongholds are necessary to withstand an assault from the enemy. Mm. So now we're going to talk just a couple minutes on some godly strongholds. Okay, we talked about the ungodly. Now we're going to talk about the godly. Okay, amen? As you memorize and quote and employ the word of God, it builds stronghold brick by brick. You're rebuilding your wall but you're building it through scripture. For example, in Christ, I am accepted. John 1, 12 says, I am God's child. John 15, 15, I am Christ's friend. Romans 5, 1, I have been justified. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, I am a member of Christ's body. Ephesians 1, 1, I am a saint. Hello, somebody. Not New Orleans Saints, baby. <laughs> a saint. Amen. Colossians 2.10, I am complete in Christ. Ooh. You see, guys, these are words coming from the Bible that God is telling you who you are. See, now you're speaking life into your life instead of condemnation. Yeah. Now you're speaking obedience into your life and not disobedient and rebellion. In Christ, I am secure. So we're talking about in Christ, I'm accepted because there's a lot of people that I have identity issues because they don't feel accepted. I just gave you six scriptures where Christ says you are accepted. Now he says, I am secure for you insecure people. Mm. Romans 8, 1 and 2, I am free from condemnation. Hello. Yes. Let's keep going. Uh -huh. What you got next? 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. What more do you need that knows you've been established and anointed by the living God? Philippians 3.20, I am a citizen of heaven. Oh, that's my favorite one. Ooh. Yeah. Hebrews 4.16, I can find grace and mercy in time of need. Amen. Guys, this is a good practice, man. Start looking in the back of your Bible. Start looking for scriptures that tell you who you are in Christ. Amen. I mean, I could go there scripture after scripture after scripture. And again, the enemy attacks you. Use the word of God as your weapon. And Luke 4 is the great temptation of Christ. 
Every time the enemy tempted him, Jesus would use three words to start the defense of the enemy's attack. It is written. Therefore, we should use the weapons that Christ used to defeat the enemy. That's all we got to do, man. To be Christ-like is do the stuff Christ did. So, guys, man, we just wanted to share our heart. Man, I hope you got something out of this. You know, I know we did. We went over this. Usually we don't have scripts down. It's not really a script, man. But this is this is something that if you guys can get, man, and repent of it, give it to God, he'll deliver you from it. But it's going to take work on your end. It's not going to be easy. Amen. No. So, man, we thank you. Uh, we will see you next time. Our next show, man, we're going to have some music Ooh. from some of the people that blessed us with their music on our website. We're going to have some testimonials or some brothers that are uh, that were in the uh, the Estes unit, uh, one of the sisters from the uh, uh, Lane Murray unit. So you guys stay tuned on our next show. God bless you. And remember, man, never go back to what you prayed yourself out of. Amen. Oh, amen. God bless y'all. Thank <laughs> you.